All I wanted to do was fight for Dan Quinn. I can't believe it didn't work out. Oh, we have another disappointment in Atlanta? Yeah, I know what that's like, because I fought a dog. A and I fought for the Brotherhood. I fought for my grandma. Are, are we not allowed to fight in Atlanta or fight for something? Why? What's going on, Falcons fans? Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown. And if you're new here, welcome. And I know what you're thinking. Why are you sitting down? You never sit down in your videos. Well, this thing right here, I don't know what you call it, but uh, the, uh, the thing to hold my camera, it, it snapped. So got to get a new one. So this is what I have to do right now. But anyway, uh, I was going to make a video going over the free agents. The Falcons should at least consider picking up in the offseason. Uh, and it's not that I didn't have time to you know, think of players we should get and who they should think about getting, but... I feel like I'll be rushing it, uh, and obviously I can't rush something that's pretty important when it comes to free agents, so I decided to make something a little simpler and easier with the amount of time I got, and also something a little fun to talk about with the news of Dante Fowler getting released and how disappointing he was. Let's go over the five most disappointing Falcons in recent memory. Now, when I say recent memory, I'm talking since 2015 because... If you guys have been on this channel for a long time, you'll know that I've only been a fan of the Falcons since 2015. So I'm only going to go based off of what I remember. And I'm not even just curious to hear your guys' thoughts on my list, but also I'm curious to hear what your guys' five most disappointing Falcons are. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the dishonorable mentions before we get into it. The first one is Jalen Mayfield. You know, the sole reason he's not on the top five list is because it's year one. Like, he might just be our greatest offensive lineman ever if we just give him time. But for now, that rookie season was pretty bad. The next one is Isaiah Oliver. Now, say what you will about him. Everyone's always back and forth, uh, forth with this guy. Uh, because they're always like, oh, well, he showed flashes the year before. Oh, he did good with Dean Pease before he got injured. And there's always these excuses for Isaiah Oliver. And then when he plays in the season, everyone's always saying he's got to get out of here. And it's like, okay, do you want him to stay? Do you think that he's going to be good? Or do you think he's going to be trash and he's never going to develop? Like, why are so many people back and forth with this? To me, I think he's just... Another one of those players that shows flashes and could maybe be good and does nothing in the actual season. That is what I think happens. It's not what I hope happens. It's just what I think happens with Isaiah Oliver. Nonetheless, though, his time in Atlanta is pretty disappointing. But for now, he's on the dishonorable mention list because maybe the flashes he showed in the year before will finally transition to the 2022 season. It will not. The next player is Wes Schweitzer. Now, to be fair, he did kind of turn his career around in the NFL, but not with the Falcons. With the Falcons, he was pretty disappointing. Another player on this list is Marlon Davidson. Now, yeah, you know, he's only in year two, and he was better in 2021 than he was in 2020, but so far, not really looking so good for Marlon Davidson. And then this last one is pretty controversial, I know. Demonte KZ. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, uh, he was pretty good, actually. He was a good safety, and he actually was tied for leading the league in interceptions in 2018, I want to say. And, yeah, you're right. Like, he actually was a good safety, and he did lead the league, or was tied for leading the league in uh, interceptions. But I always walked away from DeMonte KZ expecting a little more. I'm just like, something about him. Like, I feel there's something he's not doing that just wows me. It's not, like, impressing me too much. Uh, he was a good safety, don't get me wrong, but I didn't really think he was... He wasn't great. I feel like he could have done a little more, but that's just what I think. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the top five list. I know that last one was controversial, but number five right here might also be controversial. Quadre Allison. And I say it's controversial because you're like, oh, well, he never really got a true chance in the NFL. He was never given all these opportunities. And you're right. Like, he never really got a full uh, set of opportunities in the NFL, at least with Dirk Cutter and the Falcons. But, you know, like, are you really expecting Quadra Elson to turn things around? I'm not, personally. I don't really think it's going to happen. Uh, last year, he actually did play okay, but... 
you know, like, I'm not really expecting a whole lot from Quadre Allison. Unfortunately, he was kind of like Isaiah Oliver, where he was getting hyped up every season. Uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't really know if this is going to work out. The next player on this list at number four is going to be Dante Fowler. <sighs> Should have listened to my brother because he was giving me all this uh, talk about why is everyone hyping up Dante Fowler going to the Falcons. He literally only had one good year and that's it. And I admit, I thought he was crazy. Like, I'm like, oh, I mean, like 2019 was a breakout season for him, but 2017, he did all right as well. So just believe that his breakout season is going to keep on uh, being a breakout season for Dante Fowler. I don't really know how to say it, but basically I just had high expectations for Dante Fowler and what a disappointment that was. Now, by the way, let me respectfully say that I do hope he succeeds in the NFL elsewhere and I hope he turns things around, but in Atlanta, it didn't really work out. Uh, and the sad thing is that he actually was excited to play here as well. Like he really wanted to play for Dan Quinn. Uh, but unfortunately, things did not really turn out the way it was supposed to. The next player on the list is Vic Beasley. Now, if you are an OG Rise Up Rundown fan since 2019 and a little bit of 2020, you will know that Vic Beasley was always the talk of the show for all these Falcons content creators. They're always like, oh, Vic Beasley's so underrated and Vic Beasley this, Vic Beasley that. And I never said anything, but in the back of my mind, I was like, why are we arguing about Vic Peasley? He is so in between. Like, sometimes he's good, but in my opinion, most of the time, he's bad. As an eighth overall pick, Vic Beasley had one good year, and that is it. He literally was not even all that great afterwards. And... I just, I didn't get it. Like, I don't know why everyone was fighting over Vic Beasley. But those arguments are long gone now. They are a part of our history. Uh, and, uh, well, it is sometimes kind of funny to look back and see what they said about him sometimes. You know, Vic Beasley nonetheless is disappointing. The next player on this list you probably forgot about, and that is Jalen Collins. Now, I was excited for Jalen Collins as well. I was like, yes, like we finally got a good corner and he's from LSU, I think. Uh, and I was excited, but not only was he just very disappointing on the field, but he also just could not stay out of trouble. And that was frustrating. And he really did not last long in the NFL uh, or on the Falcons, I should say. I don't really know. Like, I don't really know what happened to him in the NFL, but uh, I don't really know what he's doing right now. I just kind of forgot about him. But uh, Jalen Collins was very disappointing and sucks that it didn't work out. And then the last player on this list, this was an easy one, Tack McKinley. So easy, so disappointing. He was having all that talk that he was fighting for his grandma with that frame that he had in draft night. And oh yeah, you know, you made the right decision because I'm gonna fight for my grandma. Eh, like <sighs> that dude was just talk, 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 talk. He was talk at draft night. He was talk on Twitter. His name is Talk, <laughs> but he's no actions. He is not a good player in the NFL. And then he went to the Browns and I think to the Raiders. I can't remember if he went to the Raiders or not, but uh, either way, he was talk, 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 no action, terrible player. Wow, that was annoying, but I'm happy it's over. <laughs> and yeah, I know we could have got TJ Watt over Tack McKinley. Let's please end that debate. We kind of get it. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Other than that, I will see you guys with a video this Tuesday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Love and appreciate you all for the support. Stay safe and rise up.